Hi and welcome to RC Modders and this is the second video on the series looking at the Bruder Telehandler. In this video I'm going to be taking you through how it operates, how it works and take you through how I did it and I'm going to be doing that basically by taking this one apart. In the videos which come after this I'm going to be taking a second model which I ordered from Amazon yesterday and actually arrived last night and I'm going to be showing you step by step exactly how I did the build and I will be probably taking some of the parts off this and then putting it on the other one. In order to complete the project I designed and produced a number of 3D printed parts. In the prototype here, and you'll see that the parts are blue, I actually used my Monoprice Mini Delta printer and that was perfectly good for the job. The links to all of the parts which I made, the STL files, can be found in the description and I put the bits and pieces up on Thingiverse. For the second prototype, I'm actually going to be using my Prusa i3 printer which I bought recently and the parts on that I've actually made using PETG, a different kind of plastic which is supposed to be more durable. Even though I would prefer that people were able to make their own prints, I know that that's not possible for everybody, so I'm seriously considering making parts that I will have printed off and making it available to people. At the moment I'm trying to work out what a fair price would be. I know the parts in here took about six hours for me to print on the Prusa, and I will be putting links in the description when I come to that conclusion. Without further ado, let's get started. So in terms of the operation, I'm using an older type Spectrum DX8 transmitter and this has got the functions on it that I need and basically the controls are forwards, backwards and steering on the right stick here. On the stick on the left here, we've got the arm being raised up and down and then we've got the tipping of the bucket. And in order to extend this arm, hopefully you can see it, I'm just using this knob here. Okay, so let's get it switched on. If I just put the arm back down again. Now for raising and lowering the arm, I've actually got a 20 kilogram servo. And in order to get this very smooth movement, which you see there, what I did was I actually slowed the servo down in the programming on the transmitter. In one of the later stages of the build, I'll go right the way through what I did in terms of setting the transmitter up. So that's that. For the bucket, I'm just using a small, inexpensive Hobby King servo. And by the way, I'm putting a full parts listing into the description to make things easier for people. You may notice that I've written the word affiliate next to a number of the links and that's because if you click on those links to buy the goods even though they're no more expensive to you I think that I get some kind of commission for it and if I do that would be great because it will allow me to build more models so let's just quickly do that and what I what I've done with this is I've actually put a mix in there so that when it's at the bottom it's kind of holding stuff and if I were to move this stick over that would actually give me a good angle for scooping stuff up and when I raise it like so and I'll just move the camera because it does go up quite a long way if I flick the gear switch here it actually puts it into a different position and if I move and if I move the stick all the way to the right that actually gives me quite a good tipping angle. Having it all on a mix like this actually makes the operation much easier when you're using it rather than having to hold the bucket in place. You can probably hear some buzzing. These servos do sometimes buzz a little bit and that's largely because they're low cost digital servos but that hasn't really been a problem for me and they're certainly strong enough for the things which I'm doing. And if I just raise it for a moment, 
Using this round knob on the back of the transmitter here, I can actually extend it either slowly or quickly. And when it reaches the end of its travel, it won't go any further. However, you do have to switch it back off again because in this model, I found that it wasn't really worth me trying to put travel limits in because it isn't putting a massive amount of strain on and it's easy enough to, to see what's going on. And then moving on to the part which really was, I think, the biggest challenge and the thing that made me hold off doing this model for so long, and that's the drive. So I've got four, I've got four motors, one in each corner, and they are permanently linked up to the throttle. So if I just do that, you can see that we've got four wheel drive and it's all coming off one speed controller. And the steering is actually, and you'll see this when I'll take it apart in a minute, the steering is actually largely operated off the existing steering mechanism. And if I just show you the steering in operation here, move my finger out of the way. And it's actually proved to be quite effective. Now most of the electronics are housed in this area here and I've just put a couple of screws which will go all the way in but I'm just leaving them loose for now. Yeah, so, so we have a fairly small receiver. Now I don't know if this receiver goes with the newer spectrum transmitters or not but it certainly works with the old DX8 and the part for this is again listed in the description. The battery that I'm using, which is one which I got from Component Shop, 1000 milliamp power, lithium ferrite, is, is actually the first one of these that I've had. And it fits in there nicely. It seems to have enough power to use the model for, for a reasonable amount of time. So I've been pleased with that. Inside there, hopefully you can see, this is the steering servo. And if I just operate it, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see its arm moving or not, but. There is, there is actually only one servo doing all of the steering. I have seen similar conversions. I'm not sure if I've seen it to this one. Maybe it's the larger telehandler where people have ended up actually putting steering servos either end. Now for those wishing to do the build, I think it's probably most interesting for me to start taking this thing apart now. I'm sure I'll find all the bits in a minute. Right, so, so for this arm here, I've got a similar arrangement to what I did in the track loader. And if I just move it, hopefully you can see that rotating. And at the other end, lead screw. Okay. Because all of this is going to go in the other model, I'm going to probably do a slightly destructive dismantling here. So that piece all comes off easy enough. I had to do some carving around this end here. Again, I'll cover that in the build video. I have plenty of wire here, so I'm not too worried about that. So 
So you can see this piece here and a couple of the 3D printed parts. Okay, in terms of how the body is mounted to the chassis, I found actually the only tabs that I needed to keep really were the ones which are holding it underneath the cab where the driver is sitting and it all actually comes off fairly easily. So this should hopefully give you a better idea of some of the mechanics going on. Let's put these back in. Goes there. That goes there. I need to hold it up because it hasn't got the top part on. So we have our steering, and the, and the motor. So you can see that I'm basically utilising the existing steering mechanism because the geometry is all there and why not and then what I was able to do was I was actually able to keep each of the wheel arches because I built something into the 3d printed parts so that it would hold them and I'll just take those out they actually come in and out quite easily Just got to make sure that you trim them properly and I'll be covering that at that stage of the build video. That's that. And then each of the each of the motors is wired up. Oops, I get that. Oh no, actually I can't pull that out because what I did was I actually put retaining screws with washers because it was driving me mad when I was trying to build it that it kept falling out. Just before I wrap up, I've got the two speed controllers here. So one of them is for the motors and the other one is for the RAM on the main arm. And the 20kg servo. In order to set that back from the side and to get it in the right position, there are actually a couple of extra 3D printed parts which are part of the set on Thingiverse. Right, well, I think that that's probably it for this video. I have now got a pile of parts where I originally had a perfectly well working ready control model. In the next part, I'm going to start by disassembling the new model which has come and taking you through the 3D parts and one or two tips on the printing of those parts. I hope you've enjoyed this and found it informative and as ever, thank you very much for watching.